have your Bible, please open it up to Matthew chapter 24, verse 10 to 12. And let's all read together. And I'd like to invite everyone to please stand up to honor the word of the Lord. You can read from your Bible or you can read in front of us. So it says here in Matthew chapter 10, or 24, verse 10 to 12, it says here, And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere, and the love of many will grow old. Father Lord, we thank you, Lord of oh God, that your word will not go voided to me, to all of us who hear your word, O oh Lord. It's not an accident that we hear, but it is you who brought our faith into your presence, O oh God, that there's a revelation that you wanted to change in our life, God, as you see your purpose and will in our life, God, as we walk through it, Lord, it is you that we're going to walk through it, O oh God, Jesus. And thank you, Father, Lord, give us the courage to fully understand your word for today and forgive us if anything in our life, God, as we offend you, O oh God. Anything in our life that offends you, Lord, search anything in us, Lord, right now, God, as we pray, Lord, that we, those things that are not pleasing to you, Lord. Thank you, Father, Lord. Malaya ka, Jesus. Jesus. Pray, everybody, say. All right, we may sit down. So we're gonna just gonna continue our word from last week. Okay, I may, some words may be repeated. Okay, but the purpose of it's really uh, what the Lord is speaking to all of us. Okay. So I have here, as I said last week. Okay, as I said last week, I'm building this fence in our house. For some of you who's not aware of our house before, that's our house before. We're building a fence. So that's our house before it's open. Okay, when you when we when we first bought our house, it's open. Okay, then we build the house. I'm not showing you my carpentry skills, okay? Because the Lord is not, you know. <laughs> not, but that's our house. When you when you enter in our house, that's when that's the time that when we bought it, okay? And then we build it, okay? And then we, we build it, and we almost finish it. But the purpose, the purpose of this one, as in our picture, the purpose of this one, the friends. Okay, that we're building. Actually, we're not building a shed. We're building a fence. Okay, that shed is just for. Okay, that shed is for for a backup. Okay, to make it stronger because there's no uh, the ground is so hard to dig it in. So that's why we put a shed. But the purpose of this one to build a fence is for what? No one could enter our house. Okay, if you're building a fence for your protection. Who's here? Who's going to? Who's here have a house? Hola. Who's here have their own house? Who's here who have who wanted to have their own house? See? Right. For sure, for sure, we're gonna have some time to build, you know, those fences. But again, our purpose, me and my wife, our purpose is so that no one could enter, and our children are not able to go outside. Right? So no one could enter that fence. Right? That fence. And from there, so from there, from the other side, and then that's our house right now. Okay? So that's our house right now. So it's fortified. You know, no one could enter there. You know, there's a camera, there is you know, there's a lot of camera in our house. If you go enter in our house, there's a lot of cameras. Okay, except in those special areas. Don't worry, okay? Where's the camera here? Pastor, is there a camera here? Okay, don't worry, okay? In those special places, there's no camera, okay? But most, most all, over our, all, all over the place, there's a camera. You're wondering what they are hiding inside. <laughs> I dig a gold, right? I dig a gold, right? Praise God. So that's our house right now. But what I'm talking about here, let's talk about the word of, uh, the word fence. Okay, we're building the fence, okay, and this fence, okay, is the purpose of this one is again to protect myself, to protect our family. Yeah, you try to enter our house, there's something will come out to you. Yeah, you come into our house, there are a lot of, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, and then alarm. In the front door, when you open the door, it, 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 everywhere. Yeah. It's, you know, it's 45 hours, you know. Don't worry, okay. So, but the purpose of this is for protection. But in our life, sometimes we are building our own fence, okay? And again, I'd just like to share with you, some of you who's not here last week, that 
the enemy, okay, the enemy, the uh, Satan, the devil, has his bait to get you off the fence. Right? So get you off the fence. Again, this word, the bait of Satan, okay, in English, what's the Tagalog word of bait? Read it in English. Yeah. If you read it in English, it's called the pain. So the bait of Satan in English, or in Tagalog, the pain of Satan in English, the pain of Satan that causing you. Who's here this week? Okay. Now again, I'll let it just like do it from everyone. There's only two categories here. You either the offender or the offended. Who's here the offender? Please raise your hand. Who's here are the offender? I offended my wife, I offended my children, I offended my, my co-workers, I, I'm the offender. Who's here the offender? Alright, there's two or three. Three only. Oi, it's a lot of four. Four only? Or five? Or six? Uh -oh. oh, and who's the other one? Who's the offend? Who's the offended? Right. There's only two categories. You either the offender or the offended. Okay. But those things, okay, being offended and offender are the same in our life. Sometimes we are the one who will offend others and we are being offended. But again, you cannot stop being offended. But how are you going to handle it again? How are you going to handle it? How are you going to deal? And what would be your response? Just this week, who's among you experienced being offended? This week, or just this today? Go to just... Tagal kasi! We've been so... We've been waiting for so long and then you're late! We're late now at the church! Then now you're being offended. Who's here today, or okay, for this week, are being offended? This region. Right? This, oh, I'll tell you honestly, I just spoke about this last week, right? For some of you. And then this week, I was attacked by the enemy being offended. I was offended this week. I was offended this week. So I said, I said, Lord, I just spoke about this, about, you know, how to handle offenses, how to deal with it. And then here is the pain of Satan trying to offend me. Okay. So who's among you here? You know what? This is really important. This is the word, how to handle the offense is really important in your life. Because if you don't know how to handle it, you know, you know, you know the word, drop it while, drop it while it's hot. Right? Drop it while it's hot. If you are still holding those offenses while it's hot, it will burn you down. It will burn you down. Yes. It will burn you. Mmm! Ah, uh, well, you know, you are going to think a lot of things, you know, what I'm going to do, when I'm going to do, and where I'm going to do, or to, uh, to revenge for this person, right? Those are the things that we're thinking about. So again, the pain of Satan in Tagalog, the pain of Satan that causing me, that causing you. Okay, the pain. Imagine this one. I was talking to Brother Gary yesterday and praise God. He's a wonderful guy. You know, I see a lot of growth and maturity in his life. You know, I see Brother Gary, you know, his growth. So I said to him, so bro, Brother Gary says you know, about the pain. Imagine you lie down in a piece of nail. You're, you know, a nail or uncomfortable place. And there are a lot of pain. That's what happening when you have those offenses in your life. You are you are sleeping but with all those offenses. And those offenses are hurting you, hurting us. The pain, Tagalog pain, diba? But the pain, the, the pain, the pain of Satan is causing us harm. Hindered you. Hindered, stop us. No? So okay, the offenses, okay? That's why we have this, okay? And here in verse, John chapter 10, verse 10, as what Father Rex says, you know, the enemy always tries to stop you from doing what God's will for you. Because he doesn't want, the enemy doesn't want you to be happy or to be in the center of God's will. Always remember that. If you know what God's will for you, 
you will know that these are the schemes of the enemy to stop you from doing what, what the Lord wants what, for you to do. It says here, the thief comes here to steal, kill, and destroy. That's true. Always remember this one, you know. If there's anything that's happening to you that killing, okay, any relationship, you know, buhay man, okay, if there's a killing, if there's a stealing, okay, or destroying in your family, that's the work of the enemy. But the plan, okay, that Jesus Christ came here to give us abundance, abundance of life to the huh? full. Are you full right now or are you empty? Right? So again, offenses, those offenses are just like a prisoner. You are going to be like a prisoner. Not working. <laughs> okay. Those offenses, look at this word. Those offenses, okay, you, we are in the pen or the fence of our good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all together in him and he is the good shepherd looking for us. Right? But then the enemy is trying to offense you to get you out the will of the Father reminded you if we are not going to understand this word every minute the enemy is going to offend you and when you offend you throw, at, oh, throw all those offenses to you and if you are not aware of it it will bear you down it will bear you down killing you softly or slowly right? you know and then once offended, okay, it's like once offended, and look at this word again, you will be off ended. You will feel like I'm done. Imagine the time that you are so happy with your marriage, and when you are offended, you're still you're thinking like I don't want it's it's not working for us anymore. You hear that word? Have you heard that word? In the movie. I hear that from my husband, please God, okay? from my wife, okay? But I heard that a word from here, from you. I heard that word from you. It's not working for us anymore. Maybe we have to let go each other. We have to separate each other. We have to let go each other. I'm hearing that inside of you. Oh, not working for us because of those offenses. Yeah, we're really too far. We're really offending each other. We're just hurting each other. And inside of your heart, you have that word. Amen. So it's trying to get you off and to end everything that God has given to you. Offense imprisons lots of people and many Christians as well. And again, as I said. You know, many people are offended inside the church rather than outside of the church. That's why probably a lot of people are not, they don't want to go into, into the church because they say, oh, I'm just going to be offended with them. You know, people are just going to talk about me and then those, you know, those things, they're just going to talk a lot of me, think about me and then I'm offended. Then I'm, I don't want to go to church anymore or to that church or to this, uh, to this place or to that person. And then you are off and dead. You are offended, right? Who's here are offended? This place, right? Who's here are offended? I was offended. As I said, I was offended this week. But I said, I just got reminded. I said, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. I just spoke about the word offenses. I just spoke about this one. And then I said, if I'm going to linger it, if I'm going to nurture those offenses that I thought if I'm offended, it will nor that instead of nor if, if you're going to nurture it, it will torture you. Yeah, it hurt. It, it will hurt you, right? Many are unable. Okay, look at these things, okay? Many are able to function properly as what they love to do before because of the offense. Imagine this, like in a mother. In, in a mother, in a, in a, in a mother, in, in a house, no? you love cooking, you like to prepare something for your husband. And then your husband said, I don't want your cooking. It's not taste good. I'd rather to have a McDonald's. And then the, the, the one that you love doing before, you love preparing this, you love this, right? And then your husband said, I don't want it, it's not good. You're being offended next time? Okay, that's, that's good, I'll give it. Right? That's what happened, right? You are, when you, once you are offended, you will go to lose what you love to do or what, what good. 
good are you at? That is, you're really good on uh, doing this thing, but then you're offended. <laughs> so, it offenses increases that of people, okay, unable to function, and what we say, we say, I don't want it anymore. Have you come into the moment of your of your life, like right now, saying, I'm offended by that church and I don't want to go there anymore. I don't want to serve anymore. I don't want to do this. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. And who's the winner? They say, we are the winners, right? Let's win the Moscosha. But then at the moment that you attach to that and give in to the offenses of the enemy that's coming to you, you are the hmm? loser. You are not the winner, you are the loser. The winner is the enemy. Right? Because he surrendered to his scheme, his tactics. Whew. Amen? The offenses in our life, right? The offenses are in our life makes you stumble. Right? Makes you stumble, makes you, you know, we'll be offended by me or I will offend you. you know, there will be time. But then there are things that you have to deal with it. Okay? It will make you immobilize. You know? Before you are allowed to do things and now, bro, sis, are you okay? Sir, no, they're not, they're not acknowledging me. Pastor's not saying thank you to me, you no, know, or uh, the organization's not, you know, giving thanks to me. No. I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, positive, true, right? It will destroy relationships. And as I speak right now, those offenses are destroying relationships right now in husband and wife. As I speak right now, all over the world, offenses will destroy us down. If you are not aware of this, of what those offenses, and you're, sometimes you are going to justify, because they did a lot of things, pastors. This is what they done. This is what they have done to me. This is what they said. This is what they did to me. How are you going to deal with that, pastor? What if that happens to you? How are you going to deal with that? Because that person may be taking a lot of offenses. I said to Brother Guy, I'm going to have some example of maybe five or six brothers who will stand up and who cover me. But just an example. If those offenses, like those friends, are covering me, okay, instead of functioning properly, it will stop me. It will stop you from what the Lord has wanted for you. Right? It will steal your door, your joy, killing you slowly. And again, as, and again, as I've said, many marriages, okay, couples right now, right, are being destroyed. As, as we speak, if we if we offend one another, try this. If you keep lingering to the offenses that you you and your wife had, and you're not let go, okay, forgiveness is to forget. Okay, not for okay, I forgive you, but then, oh, I remember what you did last year. Forgiveness is forget. Here, not, not, it's hard. Pastor, it's easy to say. It's easy to say now, yes, forgiveness. Yeah, forgive others and then just, I can forget about it. Just, it takes time. But then when you forgive, you forget. Okay? And you show those genuine love. Because if you are still not forgetting it, you're still not forgiving that person or what happened. It's hard, Pastor. It's really hard. Then ask the Lord. Listen to this message. You know, again, Due to those offenses, okay, many marriages will be broken. Divorce, annulment, you know, and I think I couldn't find the best uh, relationship with me right now. I find it to, to a friend or a co-worker and I think, you know, this is a lot better, you know. That's not, true. That's not love. That's lust. You know, true love is willing to let go. So how important to understand about the offense is really urgent right now at this moment. Many churches are being broken. Many families are being broken because of the simple word offense. I was offended by what you said. I was offended by what I heard. I was offended by what you have done or what you did not do. Right? Sometimes we are offended by those things, but sometimes we are offended because people who didn't do those things that we are thinking that they have to do. Right? I'd like to say here. Alright. One, 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 uh, one time I was uh, having this devotion. It's true. 
if you stay free, okay, stay free from all offenses, you will stay in God's will, purpose in your life. If God has a plan for you, for here and here, and to do this and this, you know, and it's you, remove everything that offends you, okay, you will stay or you will do what the Lord wanted for you to do. This is true. I'm telling you. I've been in the ministry since 2016 as a pastor of this church. If I'm, I receive a lot of, I'm being offended. I offend you sometimes, right? But I was offended by you as well. But if I'm going to keep lingering to those offenses, I'm, I'm out of here. You get what I mean? Have you guys had that? Kung matagal na kami, me and Jonah, we are really offended by and then we're just taking those offenses. I'm gone in 60 minutes. 60 seconds. I'm gone in 60 seconds. And that was happening in our in our church. You know, many are offended and then they will go to other church. They will go to this church. They will go to a different place. They will go to this place because of the word offended. And again, if I keep, if I keep those offenses and not letting it go, I will be out immediately in the will of the Lord. Unless if the Lord really wanted you, if the Holy Spirit bound you to go into this place because I have a plan for you here, then that's your the only excuse that you can have. But leaving a place, okay, from one place to another place because I was really offended, I feel like I'm a victim instead of being a victor. You know, we see, in our song says there, we see a victory. Joseph see a victory because he didn't keep those offenses from, from his brothers, from the wife of Potiphar, from the cup bearer saying, I'm going to introduce you to the king, right? But then their time comes, you know, time flies that they forgot about Joseph. But if Joseph keep on having those offenses, he's not going to be in the second command of the governor of the Egypt. And he's not able to save and to save and to feed other people, his family, from the family. You know what we're talking about, the family. So stay free from all offenses. All offenses, all words, thoughts. Don't linger it, don't give it, okay? Once you are, in, <laughs> listen to this one. Once you're impregnated by the offenses, you will give birth. You will give birth. I was offended six months ago, and then now it's getting strong. It's, it's kicking now. I would like to kick you. No. Right? It's kicking now, and then you see, when you see the person that offended you, yes, it's kicking now. I think it's speaking to you. He would like to kick you too. Right? So sometimes being offended, instead of being a victor, we are we are seeing ourselves as a victim. But you are a winner. God already paid his life for you. Not to become a loser, but to become a winner in life. To live your life to the full. To enjoy the blessings of the Lord, what he has for you. Alright? So again, okay, stay free from all offenses and you will stay in God's will and purpose for your life. No? We are not having this message today, okay? What's the purpose of this message today? We're not having this message today just to say about the offenses. But the, 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 the purpose of this message, you know what? Is for the word restoration. To be restored. I'm not saying this, yes, to give you an idea about what the scheme of the enemy If you are offended by another person or, or your organization or your wife or anyone, okay? Don't hold those offenses because it could burn you down. You say, I'll keep it for a day or a week and then I will decide. I'll speak to the person and then deal with it. Okay? Try it and then you never know. The more offenses that you keep, the more offenses that you are keeping and you are in the... Jail. You're like a prisoner of your own. The other person are enjoying their life, and then you are not enjoying your life because you think, oh, they're enjoying, I was offended, but they're enjoying their life. Okay? Again, it's more of a restoration. Remember when Joseph, about Joseph, let's go back to Joseph, Joseph the dreamer, the son of Jacob. Okay. The son of Jacob, okay? He experienced a lot of offenses, insult. You know? Well, sometimes, you know, when you really want to look at it, one time he dreamed, Joseph the dreamer, he dreamed, right? He dreamed and explained the dreams that he had from the Lord. He dreamed, and he said to his brother, you know, brothers, I have this dream. 
you know, that the hay stack, okay, will fell down, I'll bow down to me. So it's similarly like, you are going to bow down to me. And then the husband, the husband, the brothers are getting offended, huh? We are the older brothers and we are going to bow down to you. That's not gonna happen. So the brothers are offended, right, by that. And then what they have planned, they plan to kill Joseph. They plan to kill him, to destroy him and steal him. But said, one of the brothers said, no, let's just sell him so that we can have a profit. Right? Don't kill him because we're not going to get anything from him. If we kill him anyway right now, let's just sold him. And then in that case, then we have this money. We can still use the money that we're just going to tell to our father that he died. But when Joseph, if Joseph, the dreamer, right, keep all those offenses that are being offended, he's not going to restore what the Lord planned for him. The enemy intended harm for him, but God turned it for good. Just look at this. Some people will intend to harm you, to offend you, but look in the other perspective that God turned it to make you stronger, to make you more trusting to God, not to other people. Not to anyone, but except to God. You know? As I said, you know, I was blessed yesterday, you know, I was about this uh, uh, revelation, you know. When we have here, who's here, as Brother God says, you know, <clears throat> A prophetic word saying about you know trying to save you know some food. Who's here are are fearing about the coming or what's gonna happen? Like maybe there will be a famine. Who's fearing here? Or maybe you're gonna lost everything that you have. One of the things remember this one. The Bible says God is the one who gives and the Lord is the one who will take it away. When you have the Lord in your life, even the Lord takes everything that you have, what's left? And Lord. So you still have everything, right? But the enemy is trying to, no, you already spent, you already worked for it. No. But that's a revelation. Don't worry about anything because if everything's removed, you know, if everything's gone to your life, like your possession, your finance, your finances, your family, everything. I said to my wife last night, I was, we we're talking about, I said to my wife, don't get uh, fear if I die. You know? Because even I die, you still have God. You only lose a husband, but you didn't lose God. That's what more important is. I know it's hard to understand, you know. But then if you're going to have those, you know, you know, those heart, you know, that anything happens, if everything's gone in our life, still I have God. Anyway, what's gonna happen? Could we bring anything when we when we die? Could we bring anything in heaven or where we are? No, we're not gonna bring anything. Anyway, so again, the process that we're doing today is about the, 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 the purpose of this one is to inform you and to restore relationship. Okay, we're not saying this to get more offended to the people and pastor, let's talk and then we're going to settle this and we're going to point out to the person what they have done to me. It's not like that. The process of talking to one another if somebody offended you is to restore back the relationship. Remember that. To restore the relationship. We're not talking, let's say, okay, let's say in a family, if there's a sibling who's fighting, the purpose of getting them together to talk together is for them to restore the relationship, not to get even more fights. Okay? Again, prolonged offenses when tortured will torture you. Prolonged offenses in due time will give birth to bitterness. Instead of betterness, look at this, instead of your life are getting better because of those offenses, you are becoming more bitter. And again, once you are impregnated, you're not going to say, when it's going to come, it will come. Yes, for a physical, normal thing, you know, if you are husband and wife and you got pregnant, nine months, it will come, seven months, six months, you know, eight months, it will come, right? Once you're impregnated, you will give birth. Always remember that. Whatever you receive, offenses, I'll take that. I was impregnated by other people who took offenses. You will give birth if you're not going to release it. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, 27 says here, For the anger gives a foothold to the devil. For the anger. Those anger that once you receive, I was offended with what you have said. How, you know, the boy, you know, the boy starts in your life, you know, you're getting, you know, like, oh, sa ka na naiinis ka na, you're starting to get angry, you know. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27 says there, don't give 
believe that they will a put hold or some uh, some uh, entrance to your life. Once you get angry to other person, the enemy will enter. Okay, I'm welcome. Yeah. Once you become angry, you know, you're opening the door for the enemy. Revelation 3.20, the Lord is talking, you're not going to let the Lord enter, but you, when you become angry, the devil just come in. I need you right now. I need the backup. We need to, we need to hit this first. I need the backup. All right? You know, I need you. I need a plan. I need when, how to do it. I need a, a resource, how to do it. You are entering. You are letting the enemy to enter your life. Once you're offended, you are letting the enemy to enter you and asking, how could you help me? And then, you know, so once you get entertained by the offenses, words, thoughts, actions, you know, give her bitterness, anger, give all to the devil. So our question is, how are you, everyone? How's everyone? How's the offenses that you have still right now? It's been 20 years, you still have those. It's been 30 years that you still have those. It's been just five minutes, you still have those. Right? How are you? Sometimes you're saying, oh friend, how are you? Right? Listen to the person beside you. Oh friend. Oh friend, how are you? You know. As I've said, you will be offended by the closest friend that you have. The closest relationship, the more offense that you will have. Right? Oh friend, how are you? And then later on, those offenses will become Instead of being all friends, how are you? Right? And then the more you, 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 you join together, all friends, how are you? And then you are having this, this small offense. You're not, hindi mo naman ako pinagibigyan sa kanya, lagi na lang ako, ako, ako. Those all friends will become all friends, how are you? All is going for, kamusta na ang pare, kamusta na ang pare? You don't say na inaanak ko, yung inaanak yung offenses, all is growing boy, is growing girl, is kicking, right? That's true. You're gonna have offenses from your friends, from the closest, you know, maybe for your husband, for your, from your wife, Open you know. Mouth. Open mouth. Open mouth. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so again, you know, these desires give birth to sinful actions. You know, whatever you have, give desires. Now again, let's go back here. What are the reasons why you are being offended? <coughs> have you had this question? Why am I, why am I getting offended? Am I, I think I last one. Why am I get offended? You know what's the reason? Number one, because of the entitlement. I'm entitled for this. I'm the pastor here. No one can say me what the time that I should do. Right? Right? I'm the pastor here, so I can spend one hour, two hours in preaching. Right? Right? Well, uh, because I'm entitled to it. The word entitlement. Sometimes we're, give, we're using the entitlement of what we have. I am this, I am this, I am, I am this, I have this degree, I have this uh, master's degree, and then I'm entitled, I'm the boss right now. Let's say me and Zelda. One of the examples. Zelda, by the way, is our co-worker, oh, my preach co-worker in St. Vincent. You know, he's a, she's a really good. Imagine this, you know, imagine this. Okay. I'm the supervisor, I'm the nurse, and Zelda is our, uh, our uh, one of the most in the floor, but if I'm the supervisor and then Santa says, uh, Ramon, could you do this for, could you do this? And I'm, the, I'm, in, I'm the supervisor, I have the title, right? I'm so offended by that, right? So sometimes we are offended because of the word entitlement. Don't worry, I don't, I don't get offended. You know? As I said, if I'm offended by you about giving me time, I'm gone here, right? Don't worry, okay? But the word entitlement, right? In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 7, look at this one. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 7. God is entitled, Jesus is entitled, but He stripped off, He died, He stripped off His characteristics. It says here, let's go. Philippians. Okay, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, it says here, You must have the same attitude that Christ had. Though He was God, He didn't think of Himself as Equality with God has something to cling to when He became human. Okay, there are limitations in His condition when He became human. 
Okay? Remember, there are a lot of things that enemy tried to say to him, to, to Jesus. You can call on to many, uh, many of your angels to help you. Right? But it says here, instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave or a servant and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God. He didn't think of himself or he stripped of himself the privileges of being God. Yes. So the word entitlement. So if I use all my entitlement being a pastor, you know what I mean? I got, I got, I will get, I will get all the perks of being a pastor. I will get a house. I will get this. I will get this and this and this. Right? If I use my authority being a pastor, right? The word entitlement. I'm entitled to that. Right? Number two, expectations or interests. This is because of what are my expectations from this person? And again, many people, many Christians are offended inside the church because of their of expectations. You are not being offended to other people who stand in the church, class, but to a brother or a sister, they are already believers, right? Why they are saying that? Why they are doing that? Why they are thinking those things? They are already a believer. They are already in Christ. But if a person is not inside the church, it's okay. The Lord is going to bless them. The Lord is going to give them understanding how to deal with it, right? So there's expectation from the inside and from the outside. Is that true? You have more expectation to the person beside you or the, at the back of you? Okay? That's true. Let's say, oh, look, at, look around. Look around. Okay? Look around. Look at the faces. Okay? Just an example. When you see each other in downtown and something is inappropriately being said or you heard or you saw somebody doing this, you are being offended. I thought that Christian, that brother is already a Christian, but why is he doing this? Why is she, why is she saying this? Right? Because of the word expectation, you have expectation, and once we met, once we didn't meet the expectation, then you get offended. And what the Bible says, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for everyone was short glory of God. Everyone. You have a higher expectation from me rather than the person beside you. Is that true? You have a higher expectation in the leadership of the church, you know, than the person, than the, just the ordinary person beside you. Is that true? Because I'm the pastor here, you, you, you have this expectation from me, and maybe some of the other person in this church, you have expectation just here. Is that true? True. Right? The pastor should be this. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 7, this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Right? This is what it says in the Bible, that a leader should be here, you know. You have a lot of expectations. But again, once that expectation wasn't met, you will be offended. Right? You will be offended at work, at school, at home, and even in the church. We talk about the first Sunday about the church that we have to love one another, and we're going to continue about the series about love. You know, next week, together with Brother Gary, right, about the church. What's really in the church? You know, instead of having those offenses, will divide us. And once you have those offenses, you will have this heart, you know, something that to have a rebel. And then you gotta ask somebody who's hurt it, you know, let's say if I hurt Brother Gabi, okay, if I hurt Brother Gabi, and I, if I hurt Brother Patrick and uh, Brother Jeff, okay, Brother Gabi will ask, you know, will will see who's the person who's being offended by the pastors. And once you found out that it's Jeff and Patrick or anyone else, you will build a group. Okay, yeah, I think. Before you talk about things that, yeah, it's good, they're good, okay? But now you've been offended, it's just okay. Right? That's true. That's true what's happening. Instead of being united, we are being divided. Because that's what the enemy would like us to do, to become divided. But God doesn't want a body to have, to be divided. We have one body and different parts. You are each part of the body. I am a part of the body. Amen? Because of the expectation. Number three, because of the desires. This is what I this is what I desire. This is what I would like, you know. Let's, okay, let's talk about inside the church. This is what I like a desire in the church. This is what I like a desire. This is what I think about the church. Okay? Or a Christian fellowship. You have your own desires. Let's hear it. These desires give birth to 
through sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. That's true, brothers and sisters. If we're not going to tackle about this, you know, and this that only speaks to you, it speaks to me. As I've said to you, just this week, I just spoke about offenses last week, and then I think that was this week, you know, I was offended. But I said, wait, 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 wait. Why I'm going to pay attention to this one, or why I'm going to think about what, you know, what are those things that get offended to me? I have to release it, and don't look at it, don't look back, okay? Release it. Forgive those persons, even the person that has been sorry to you, pass his heart. The person that asked sorry to you. Did you ask sorry to the Lord when he died on the cross? Right? He died on the cross. While we're still sinners, he died on the cross. Right? Same thing. Forgiveness is not about when you ask forgiveness, I'll forgive you. Forgiveness is also love. You have to give it. I spoke to the first, I spoke to some of the people here who was being offended, but they give it freely. I was talking about the, one of the one of the uh, people here, a person here, was being offended, and I see them grow. Amen. Yeah. All right. Because of the desires, right? But the desires, our desires, should not be your own desires, but what the desires in the Lord. Have this understanding. If your desires is with the Lord or for the Lord, everything is not going to be out of His will. It says here in Psalm 37 verse 4, Brother Gabi says, Take delight in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Take delight. Don't have your own desires to feed you in, you know, but have delight, Lord, really, what you have for me? Take delight in Him. And when you delight in Him, you're not, your desire is not about for this world. Your desire is more about for Him, for His glory, to please Him. It is for Him. And the more you desire, the more you get offended. Lord, I'm desiring this, I'm praying for this, and then when the Lord didn't give to you, Lord, I'm offended by you. Are you offended by God? Are you offended by God? Raise your hand. There are times, okay, Lord, I'm praying for this, but you're not even giving. There are times you're asking, Lord, why? 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 Again, you know, we have to overcome evil with good. You're not, you cannot overcome offenses by other offenses, but you have to overcome evil by doing good. Sometimes we have another uh, why the reason number number four is because just people are just being offender because those people who offend is the offender they have been offended before and those things are not going to stop okay in our family in this church in our community if I'm being offended okay, if I don't cut those offenses or if I don't let go of those offenses if I don't drop all those offenses I will be continue and I'm I'm in the pulpit if I'm offended I will continue to preach you that's why I said in our verse here for it says here that people will grow old and false prophet will will be arising because of the offense. If I'm offended right now, I'll, I'll be talking a lot of things to you. It says here, and many be, and then many will be offended. Look at this. If I'm offended, betray one another, then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Because of the offense that I have, I will speak not what the Lord says, but what I have in my heart. And that's what happened. There are just people who's been offended. And if we're not going to cut that, those offender and offend others and offended will become offender. It's like bullying. If you're not going to be a bully if you haven't been experienced bullying. That's true. You know, if you haven't experienced to be loved, you're not going to share the love. If you haven't experienced to be forgiven, you're not able to forgive. That's true. And that's why we're talking about this. About love, you know, whatever you receive will grow in your heart. If you receive love, it will grow love. If you receive bitterness or offenses, it will grow, it will grow offenses. 
we have to overcome. And again, I have this uh, example to Joseph, one of the example, there are a lot of examples in the Bible, and we are the example also of being offended. One of the examples is Joseph. I would like to inform also about the example of Jesus, the life of Jesus, being insulted, being offended. If Jesus stay or keep all those offenses, there is no salvation, there is no life at the moment. But Jesus didn't focus with the offenses. He focuses on God. You know? It's like those things that the enemy is trying to, to hit him is just really saying to us. To us. It's, just not, it's not staying to him. Right? The Bible says, deny yourself. If anyone would like to be my follower, deny yourself and be my follower. When we say deny yourself, it is not us, it is not us or me longer living in this life. It is God living in my life. So if somebody offend me, it's not me anymore. I know you're thinking, yeah, Pastor, it's, yeah, you're just saying that. That's why I'm praying that you are going to have this insight to understand what the Lord's saying. And you have close understanding of forgiveness. It will be easy for you to live a life of fullness. Understand that. Just being insulted, being offended, okay? but he focus or pay attention more to God, the Father, his relationship. He focuses his relationship more to God. You know, people are being offended by him, but he don't focus to them. This is what our thought. Sometimes the offender wrong us, okay? And then when they wrong us, they owe us. We owe us. Sometimes we are, we are quickly, we are quick to plan how to respond or to revenge. But God says the revenge is mine. Remember, Joseph didn't think of any revenge to his brothers or to anyone. But look how God restored him, to restore his glory to Joseph. The same thing with you. If you are being offended, look how God is going to restore you. Yes, people are just being offended you, you know. But look at that one. Look at that. No. Offended by others, you know, again, you cannot stop being offended by others, but you have a choice. I have a choice. Whether I'm going to linger it or to drop it. Again, drop it while it's hot. Try this, you know. Try to hold a pan that's really hot. Why you holding a pants while it's really hot? Are you able to hold it? Oh, it's so hot. But why the offenses are being hot in your you are loving it because you're thinking, I have to revenge. Right? God says, Revelation, Romans chapter 12, verse 19, that revenge is mine, not for you. So that you don't give the enemy to enter your life. Let God. But again, you know, we say, and just no bala sa kanya. Karma. Karma siya. Karma siya. Karma yung tawag. What goes around, uh, will goes around. Karma. Again, you can, you have a choice when you're being offended. You can help the person accountable, or you can just let go for you. How it is, how it is in our life, if somebody offend you and you say, that's all right. Don't worry about it. I forgive you. It would be easy and it would be a lot more peaceful for your life. A lot peaceful. Yeah. Maybe some of you don't understand what I'm saying, but uh, you know, when we do not forgive, all the offenses, you are building your own prisons. So as I said, building or getting all those offenses blocks all your senses or everything in your body, your eyes, your ears, your taste, you know, you're being offended. I don't I, I don't know how to cook any more good food. Good, good. For example, like one of the examples, Brother Roger. Okay, we have a great food yesterday, and then I said, uh, Brother Roger, your food is not up. So said that Brother Roger, bro, can we, or can we have a food from you? Brother Roger, Pastor, I'm busy. Right? The same thing with our wife, with our partner, with our, you know, with our family. Right? Alright. I thought it's Sinigang. I thought it's... I thought it's... I thought it's Abritada. 
Or ano yan? Ano yan? Caldereta! No, it's Puchero. I thought it's Caldereta. I thought it's Sinigang. No. Diba? Now, okay, now, what I would like us, for us to do, to all of us, is to have this, how to deal with offenses. Okay, how to deal offenses, look at this one. How to deal offenses, number one, the first thing of all is to let it go, to drop it. Once you receive the offenses, don't entertain it. Drop it while it's hot. Drop it immediately. When you're, okay, let's say, if I have a friend with you, okay, let's say, brother God, please. If I'm going to offend somebody, drop it while it's hot. Okay, just an example. If you're sick, what's up? 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 What's up?
The same thing in us. We are a deaf person. We are we are forgiven by God. Those sins that we have, we have been forgiven. Why it's hard for us to forgive others? I know you're saying, you're asking me, Pastor, it's hard to forgive. Look at what happened to Jesus. Jesus forgive us. And it's hard for us to forgive others. Look at that scenario. Look at that, how God loved us. Father, the Lord, love us, forgiven us. But then it's hard for us to forgive others. Then again, I'm saying to you, you cannot give what you have. You cannot forgive. If you are not, if you have, if you are not understanding the forgiveness that you receive from God. Maybe you're not we're not saved any yet. Because we don't know yet to forgive. We don't know the forgiveness, the extent of the Lord's forgiveness in our life. That's why it's hard for us to forgive. Because probably we haven't received anything. We just pray the sinner's prayer, Lord, I pray for you. I believe in you. But when God says, again, in my, in my grace, it says, Dear Father, forgive me. Lord, forgive me as I forgive others. And there comes the repentance, a change of life, a new person. And again, I say thank you. I see in Brother God a lot of things done the Lord in his life. Just, just think about this. Forgiveness is really important. Says here, that's what my heavenly Father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and your sisters. Okay. It's hard for us to forgive. Then probably we haven't received forgiveness from God. Look here. Who's here are blessed? Amen. Who's here are blessed? Please raise your hand. Okay, you are blessed. Okay, you are blessed. Okay. If you are blessed, okay, you are able, it's easy for you to release the blessings in your hand, right? Because you are blessed. But if you are not blessed, I can't give you right now. I don't have anything. Same thing with forgiveness. If you receive the forgiveness of God, you are able to forgive others. Just look at that. Very simple, very basic, very basic Christian foundation. You're not going to be saying, just saying, Lord, the sinner's prayer. There's no sinner's prayer. Lord, Father, I, I, I accept you and I trust you. The Lord God says, go to the person that offends you and reconcile, reconcile to have this fellowship again. Before God, before the Lord, before the Lord, I able to say, I love you. He reconciled, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to reconcile to us. That's what forgiveness is. There's no greater love than this to lay down one's, one's, one's life to his friend. Number one, forgiveness. Number two, soak your life in the word of God. So your life in the word of God. I said, read, read the word of God. When we say so, Tagalog, babad. Okay, so, babad mo. Okay, babad mo nga yan para matanggal yung mga, yung mga, eh, mamatitikas. Now, kung nagluto ka, babad mo muna, hindi agad hugas, hugas siya. Don't use a scratch fight, it's a teflon or mamahalit yan. Diba? Ibabad mo muna. That's what we need. Be so in the presence of God. Be so in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Without it, you cannot go to a battle. And when you go to a battle, you are dry. You know what SpongeBob? SpongeBob. Sponge. <laughs> you know about the sponge? Okay. The sponge is always so, right? So when you're about to use it, right? When you squeeze it, that's a problem. But when the sponge is dry, there's no use for it. Soak yourself, it says here, in Psalms, look at Psalms 1, verse 2 and 3, it says there, they light in the Lord, meditating on the Lord, on the word of the Lord, day and night. But they delight in the love of the Lord, meditating day and night, they are like trees planted along the river. They are really, they really have a good source of water, their school, that's what will be our life. Bearing fruit each season. If you remain in the Lord and abide in Him, you will bear much fruit. If you don't soak yourself, if you don't remain in the Lord, you will not have fruits. You will have juicy fruits. <laughs> right? That's what you're going to have. Do you have fruits? Yes, I have juicy fruits. 
No, talk about the fruit of the spirit in our life. No, I have this fruit. It's sweet. It's yellow. Number three, make intentional about this. This what this what's missing in our life, in our house, in the community, in our church. This what's missing. Live a peaceful life. Right now, be intentional about it. Don't ever think to offend other people. If there's, there's a sense of that, uh, whatever you're gonna say, whatever you're gonna think, or whatever you're gonna do, will offend other people. Be intentional about it. Think before you play. Diba? So think before you say about it. If you think that the word that you're gonna come out of your mouth will offend your wife, your husband, or anyone, live a peaceful life. It said in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, work at a work. It means in action. Work at living in peace with everyone. And work at a living a holy life for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. It's we're saying here, live a peaceful life. Be intentional about it. You know, in your life groups, you know, in this fellowship, in your family, be intentional about it. Before, uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing before that. I'm saying before, but now, I'm being cautious. Be cautious. Maging maingat ka. Okay po ba? Maging maingat tayo. Be, be careful what you say. Number four, avoid offenses to offend others. Avoid offenses to offend others. What are those? It says in Romans chapter 14, okay? If there are foods or drinks that offend other people, avoid those. Let's say, one of the examples. If some of you are not, okay, let's say, Brother Eric. If Brother Eric is not wanting to be offended if we're going to eat a balut, I'm going to eat in front of Eric, bro, I'm going to eat the balut. No. And then Eric, ah, yeah. the same thing in our life. If, we, if other persons are being offended by what we are doing, don't do it anymore. Don't show it to them. Don't, wait, wait, I'm entitled to it. Alright? I'm entitled to it. I can do whatever I want. I have this free will, but Galatians chapter 5 verse 13, don't use your free will to feed your own desires, but use your free will to serve other people. Sometimes this is what the thing. In Romans chapter 14, Paul says, if I could eat a lot of things, but people are being offended by those, then I'm not going to eat those things. One of the examples, let's say, one of the examples, let's say, if I enter into your house, or if you enter into our house, and you say, Pastor, I'm not eating a blood, nugo, dilugba. And you say, Pastor, it's really like na kang gross like sa akin. And they say, no, ang sarap nito. Ang sarap. And then inside of you, nakaka-open naman si Pastor. Hindi ako pinigyan. Nakaka-open naman si Pastor. Sabi ko, mukhang sa tingin ko, di ba? I think that's not good to in 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 help. But then, di ba? You're being offended. Don't lose your freedom. Okay, to, to offend others. In Acts, in Acts chapter 24, verse 16, Paul says, So I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and men. Inside of this church, you really have a lot of offenses. But probably now, starting right now, you're going to hear a lot more of love. Right? Say, I love you. Say, I love you to the person beside you. Except Jacob and now. <laughs> Say, I love you with the love of the Lord. <laughs> Alright. We love one another. So again, be intentional, okay? Brother and sister, be intentional. Okay? Be intentional about it. Sometimes you are saying, uh, yes, I have a free will, I can do this, but if other person, children, okay, your wife, are being offended by what you do, stop doing it. Psalms 39, 23, 24, David says, Search me, O God, and know my answers. So search me anything that offends you. Maybe sometimes in a husband and wife, you talk about together, what offends you? What is the thing in me that offends you? Right? So that you know each other. Yeah. Ayaw niyo nang ganito. My wife knows about it. My wife knows na ayaw ko yung ano. Yung is that in the faith to Christ. Yung is ano. Yeah, if you're going to have a food in the table and then the, the fish is not toasted, you burn. No, I like burned food. Okay. Now, you know, when you have a coffee, I like burned corns. Okay. So, when the food, when the, the fish is not toasted, sometimes I get, oh, I'm really hungry. And then, 
But then my wife already knows it. She knows already that uh, should be toasted. So same thing in our in our family. You know, no, be, be, be intentional. You know, those are the things that if you say it's you know, tabak na. You know, pinta nga siya sa mga bata, bata, bata. You know, don't say words that offend other people. Sometimes it's me also. I'm, of, I'm, I'm, I'm the offender also in our house. But while I'm studying this, I said, yeah, that will be a change, a life changing in our life, in, our, in this church right now, right? Be intentional not to offend others. Amen? Amen. 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 Yeah. May la the pastor, ito po yung nangyari, ito po, ito po, mag-usap po tayo. Okay? Next, make it clear. Number five, make it clear. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 to 24, what do you mean make it clear? It means, make it clear to the person what are those offenses or if you're having those offenses. Again, the purpose of that is not to describe how you're being offended, but to have a reconciliation. We're not going to have a talk of something, okay? I'm, I'm not going to point out to you or this, let's say, I'm, I'm being offended by my brother, brother, okay? And I say, bro, this one, I'm going to bring everything. I'm offended, I'm offended. No, the purpose of talking is to have a reconciliation, to reconcile, because that's what the church is. Amen? Right? So it's here. It says here, no, it's not there. But it says, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 24, what are the things? If you are being offended, go to the person, okay? Go to the person. If the person doesn't listen to you, get somebody to bring with you a witness and talk to them. The purpose, again, is not to discuss about those offenses, but to have a reconciliation. Because we love one another. Amen? Make it clear. Reconciliation. Okay. The reconciliation is because we receive this forgiveness. And the question again at your mind, Pastor, is really hard. Do what Jesus did about offenses. What did he do? What Jesus did? He nailed it on the cross. All the sins of ours are nailed on the cross. That's why he could say to the Father, Father, forgive them. If you can say, Pastor, ang ilan talaga ilan ko yung mga offenses eh. Nail it in the cross. I have your papers for the women. I have your papers, what you're written at the cross. I have those. I said to Brother Gary, bro, I'd like to have those papers. So I have your papers when you have your women's victory. And whatever you nail it on the cross. Nail when you nail in the cross, nail yourself as well in the cross so that you can deny yourself and everything is bound at the cross. It is finished, it is done. Right? So you can say, Father, forgive them. For, you know. And then again, you say, Pastor, they are not being sorry. Imagine the example of Jesus. We have to say sorry to the Lord, but He died. He already gave us. How is God love God? And to last, to close this one, I'd like to go back to the word, to the story about Joseph. They offended, okay? Offense should not stop or hinder us. Being offended does not mean end of the world. There's the word restoration, restored. Joseph was being offended, but he see a victory. When you're offended, don't look yourself as a victim. But you are a victor. Even though your name is not a victor, but you are a victor. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 says here, You intended to harm me. This is what Joseph says to his brothers. Because his brothers are being afraid. Maybe Joseph is going to kill them of what they have done because they tried to kill Joseph. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what is now being done, the saving of lives of many lives. The enemy is trying to destroy you of those offenses, but look at what God can turn into your life if you let go of all those things. Again, don't hold on to all offenses. Don't hold on to it. 
If you have it right now, who's being offended right now? Can you stand up? No, I'm being like what? Big test or something? Sometimes, oh, I don't want to stand up. I'm not. I'm not offended. I'm not one who's offended. No, let's stand up. You know, brothers and sisters, those things to deal how the offense, forgiveness, so first life with God's word, with God's word, live a peaceful life, avoid offenses, make it clear. One thing is missing to that. And that's the word, a genuine love. We're always gonna go back and go back and go back to what the word unconditional love. You're not going to forgive, to let go everything without a genuine love. And when we say a genuine love, it means you receive a genuine love of God. You know what Jesus did for you? He died on the cross to have a restored relationship with God the Father. That's what's important in our life. Yes, we have all the possessions right now, we have everything, but we have love, we are nothing. I would like to speak to everyone at this time, at the moment right now, if you still hold it on to all those offenses, drop it down. Drop it, drop it. It won't, it's not helping you at all. It will stop you, it will hinder you, it will destroy you. Everything could happen in your life. So I'd like to ask everyone, right now, at this moment, at this moment, search yourself, examine yourself, determine what's in your heart, okay, or those offenses that you have. Drop it, Lord, I drop it, and don't just drop it, drop it at the cross. It means drop it, and the Lord, here it is. And you will see a life of full abundance in you. Maybe you're not experiencing the life that the Lord has for you because you have these offenses. I'm not saying that we are living in the Buddha of life, but I'm learning how to let go of all those things. I'm learning what the Lord God, and I'm not only a hearer, but let me a doer. You're not attending this church, okay, just to be have a maintenance of your schedule every Sunday. But you are attending to this church because God wanted you to go to a different place to testify to your family of what God has doing in your life at this time. That's that's what that's what the purpose of the church. We're not attending to this church because just to have these numbers. Again, I don't want to be in a church where the life is not being transformed. And again, before the life being transformed, God says, your life needs to be transformed. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, don't copy the behavior of this word, but let God. You cannot transform yourself. Let God transform you. Every time I read the word of God, every time God speaks to me. You know? There will be coming time that you and I will speak to each other. Will come time that we're going to live each other. At that moment of time, because we are ready to go. I said that to Brother God. When a person is ready to go, you're not leaving to this church because you're offended. But it's good that you're leaving to this church and go to another place because the Lord calls you to do that. That's what the purpose. If you're leaving this church, I'm not asking you to stop going from this church or now we cannot stop. Or now we cannot go to this church because we are bound. No. When you're going, when you're going to leave this church, it is the only reason is because of that. The only reason is because the Holy Spirit bound you to go. Not because of that, of sense. Don't leave your family because of the offenses. Don't leave this church because of the offenses. But except because the Holy Spirit found you through. The only reason I'm going to leave this church it's not because I'm being offended, but if the Holy Spirit found me. 
And that's how I would like to say to you. May you go wherever the Lord wanted you to go. But don't leave this church if you are being offended. Again, I'm going to go. Me and my family. I'm not going to leave this church if it's just because the reason I'm being offended by you or by anything or, or, or by this life. But I will leave this church as the pastors of this church because because the Holy Spirit wanted me to do it. So brothers and sisters, let go of everything that you have. It's not going to help you at all. You can close your eyes right now and let me pray to God. Father, who art in heaven, Father Lord, anything in our life, those offenses that's still in our life, oh God, Lord, may you help my brothers and sisters, including me, if anything still bothers us. You said in your word, you will know the truth and the truth will set us free. So we are free. But these offenses that you are holding on are being prison to you. Let go of everything inside first in your family. Declare it. Declare it to yourself. I declare. I forgive. I let go of all the offenses. I forgive whoever those people that offended you. How hard, how strong, how deep it is the, the, the pain that they caused you. It is not them. It is the enemy. We are battling with the enemy. We are battling the spiritual reality that the person let go of everything and you will see witnessing the life of abundance life. I would love to see a genuine abundance of life in you. I would like to see abundance of life in your life right now. And that's going to be happening if you're going to release all those offenses so that you will be free. God already freed you. If God already freed you, you're already free indeed. Don't go back anymore to the prison. It's hard to see. It's dark where God gives you an abundance of life. Let go of everything. Don't just pretend to love others. Love genuinely others. The more you love others, the more you will be forgiving. Love each other with a genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Father, I thank you, Lord of God, for your wonderful word. And Lord, I believe that this word that you have in our life will have an impact in our life, will lead us, will transform us. It is not who I speak, but it is you who speak in individually in our life, oh God. We will never be the same yesterday. We will never be the same as what we have before, but we will have a new life, a transformed life. A life being a believer, being a spiritual, being a children of the Lord. We surrender to you, Lord. Everything in our life. We surrender everything. Come to us. Fix everything that's missing. Make us whole. We, we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Let everybody say, Amen. Amen. God bless you.